you must be interested in the history of KTM and how they came up with transfer port injection. I will explain to you the evolution of the KTM two-stroke engine platform from the early 1990s to 2017, what has been added and improved over the years. There were refinements and some turning points, such as the switch to hydraulic clutches in 1997 was a game changer. In 2008, an electric starter was added, and in 2017, an all-new two-stroke engine with a counterbalance was installed for the first time. However, the addition of the transfer port injection, TPI fuel injection system to the 2018, 250 EXC and 300 EXC is arguably the most significant change to KTM's two-stroke models. KTM tried to make direct fuel injection for years, but there were many problems and not everything went right the first time. They made many systems that did not prove to be good enough until they came to the transfer port injection system. But the end result was worth it. The Austrian manufacturer went on to introduce the world's first fuel injection production off-road motorcycle. The engine using the orbital injection system looked good on paper and was very good at reducing emissions and overcoming any carburetor issues, but the design was almost entirely geared towards emissions and homologation rather than handling. The project started in 2004 and everything went according to plan. Fuel consumption and performance were average, with this system completely different engine design was required. The first prototype appeared in 2006 and was tested for few years. At the time Orbital was the leader in direct fuel injection. KTM chose to work with Orbital using their technology. The system made the engine a nightmare to fit into the existing frame without major modifications, something the chassis designers were unwilling to do. And even bigger problems showed in the software. The computers were not fast enough. At the time of testing, performance was quite poor. This system also has a big drawback. It used a lot of electricity, and we all know that motorcycles are limited with output. In order for the system to work properly, it needed fuel on high pressure, which required very powerful pumps. So we can say that this system was not simple, but it was part of the testing, and KTM was one step closer to a system that worked. KTM's design team soon realized that the main goal should be a rideable and easy-to-maintain motorcycle. These goals could not be achieved with an orbital system. This next-generation engine came in 2012, with two injectors positioned and injecting directly into the combustion chamber. It was simple and lightweight and robust, and compared with the orbital system, it used a lower pressure what was game-changer. This direct injection system was developed by KTM in collaboration with a technical university in Austria. It had much better rideability than the engine with the orbital system. In late 2015, KTM was actually very close to starting production with the direct injection bikes, but the final prototype testing revealed problems they haven't seen before. The direct injection system worked pretty well on the 250, but there were difficulties in keeping the piston cool on the 300. The engine was overheating, and the piston could not last long which was too dangerous to sell such a motorcycle. In the end, KTM decided there were too many problems with the this system that they could not properly solve, so they gave up. With the TPI system, fuel is injected into the transfer ports with two injectors. By injecting the fuel against the airflow direction in those ports, KTM found it creates a much better mixing of fuel and air, and a more efficient combustion. The oil still finds its way into the engine's crankcases, with help of throttle body. The oil is pumped at low pressure from a tank, which is mounted under the seat. By separating fuel and oil, there is no longer need to use Premix fuel, because the TPI system calculates and sends a sufficient amount of oil to keep the engine running lubricated. The goal of having a fuel system that performed as good as a carburetor was a pretty big challenge. Maybe this all seems simple to you, but years of work and research were invested in the TPI system, which turned out to be the best thing KTM has ever done. The orbital system and direct injection system failed to match the carburetor bike's performance in terms of power, feel, and sound. You ride a motorcycle because you have a passion for it, and two-stroke fans like the noise and smell and the way they deliver their power. The orbital system had strange sound, like something was wrong with the engine. With the direct injection engine the sound was more natural. It was easier for riders to identify where in the rev range the mixture was lean or rich. That was important, because during the testing, the map it could be adapted quickly. But the direct injection system engine still fell weird and not working good, like carp bike and it had bad throttle response. In other words, overall power feel was not so good. Thankfully, the TPI system enabled us to achieve main goal of keeping the TPI model's ability and power characteristics as close to the carb engine as possible while eliminating the disadvantages of carb engines, such as the needs to carburetor adjustment for different elevations and humidity. The TPI engines are easier to ride everywhere, which is a big plus. TPI power is more smooth and allows you to crawl up a hill at low revs, and the engine never appears to want to stall. It's more responsive than carb bikes, particularly at low revs, but it's not overly aggressive. Furthermore, there is no need to rev the engine to clear it out on long downhills, and both emissions and fuel consumption are significantly reduced. Reduced. What are the benefits of new TPI? Automatic setting for altitude and temperature, so no jetting needed like on carb model. 
It has oil pump, does not need Premix fuel anymore. More precise engine performance, improved linear power delivery, reduced fuel consumption. There is no waste of fuel like on carburetor models. Are the Husqvarna models different from KTM TPI? No, the Husqvarna and KTM use the same technology. Husqvarna comes standard with a switch to change the injection map. Husqvarna also has a different concept of airbox with which the engine running and feeling remains specific to Husqvarna. Is fuel injection technology maintenance complicated? No, new models are still easy to maintain and have the same service interval, as well as previous models with carburetor. With the addition of the fuel injection on new models, other mechanical components have remained identical, as in previous on-carb models. So there will be no problems with maintenance, and KTM is using very reliable parts. Is the risk of fuel system failure increasing with the addition of injection system components? The system is definitely something more complex. However, this technology has been tested on the previous four-stroke models. It proved to be very reliable. Was weight increase compared to carburetor 2017 models? Yes, weight increase for 3 kilograms result is adding components such as fuel pump, oil pump, oil tank, and other electronics. Is it possible to use a Premix fuel in TPI? No, you will lose lubrication of the crankshaft and bearings what will cause engine damage. Is KTM the only company that has this technology? Luckily, there is also TM Racing. The fuel-injected 2020 TM Racing 300 has 4 more horsepower than the carb model. And, yes, the carburetor models are still available for the time being. But for how long we don't know. The oil tank is on the right side frame and holds approximately 23 ounces. A separate oil pump is also used in this system. The fuel injection system on the 2020 TM 300 fuel injected is nearly identical to that found on KTM and Husqvarna TPI models. It appears that fuel-injected two-strokes are the way of the future. The driving force behind this technology has nothing to do with performance and everything to do is most with Euro regulations. The TM300 was first seen in prototype form at the Winter 2018 motorcycle show. Sherco also demonstrated its fuel-injected two-stroke engine to the public in 2017. This prototype was never finished and offered for sale. Their public response was, we just want to do something that works perfectly and for us, the customer is number one. The Sherco fuel-injected motorcycle is still not available to the public. Sherco had a system similar to KTM transfer port injection. We can expect Sherco to sell two-stroke fuel-injected bikes on the market in the future. Many people are working to develop this technology, not only big companies. I believe it is a Yamaha YZ two-stroke. Unfortunately, I don't know what happened to this homemade project. I'll try to find that out for you. Of course, we have to mention the new system that KTM released to public in 2023. It is a throttle body fuel injection system. We still don't know much about him and how TBI system performs. But certainly since TPI performed very well, we are sure that TBI is even better. This system differs in that the injectors are placed in the body and not on the cylinder like on TPI model. Another very important thing is that you no longer have to use an oil pump which gives the advantage that you can use Premix fuel again. If you want to know more about TBI, you have a video on my channel.